You're listening to From a Certain Point of Skew, the unrivaled Star Wars podcast that doesn't just include listeners in the conversation, but guarantees to leave them questioning their life decisions more than Anakin Skywalker after taking the high ground challenge. Prepare yourself for discussions darker than the depths of a porter potty parked over a Sarlacc pit and humor more adult than Garza Fwip's cantina after the red lights come on. <laughs> we're here to unravel the secrets that make the Sith whimper, and we're taking you with us. So hold on tighter than Pelimoto during a Jawa mating season, because you're pressing play, and now you're stuck with us. And now you're stuck with us. I'm Jason Inger, Ginger Jedi Guy, and broadcasting live from inside Wookie Poo Studios. We're going to make this really fucking fast because we recorded for 15 minutes and didn't record. I'm angry. Hello, Matt. How are you? Uh, I'm good. A couple of things. One, this is why I don't even know why I try to write a story from our our book, listening to you uh, and your prose, because it's so much better than mine. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call that prose, but thank you. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm doing okay. I, I wanted to say before we go too deep into it that I wanted to thank Ro for coming on our show, doing the crossover episode with us. Go check yes. out Scare of Scuttlebutt. It's episode 175. You get part one. Come over for us to for part two on 127 last week. It was a lot of fun. We'll do some more stuff with Ro in the future because he's a lot of fun to podcast with. He is a lot of fun. I had fun on both of those episodes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to give a little teaser that even though we're in a bit of a dead period, it kind of gives us a nice opportunity to get into a lot of other stuff. Um, so we have a lot of fun stuff coming up December and January. It's going to be fun. And so you know, look forward to some more episodes coming soon especially this month we got a, a few really funny ones if you want to find our show from a certain point of skew.com you can find us on twitter at facpa pod and you can email facpa pod at gmail.com what's on the show dog well besides the barking ass dogs on the show we've got question of the week there's something that says animated characters in the flesh i'm not angry anymore we're gonna have a good time <laughs> Uh, news. We've got a couple of things in the news. Taika in a Star Wars film. Uh, Ray, the Jedi Order film. We'll discuss that. Will we ever get Mara Jade sighting? You got it close I did it this again. time. <laughs> and uh, a, dip, is it a disturbance. There's a disturbance. In the Force documentary. It's coming out December 5th. We're going to cover that. Probably not as much as we're going to cover it later when it's actually out. But you're excited Correct. for this one. Fuck yeah, I think it's going to be good. I saw the preview and it looks looks nice. Looks right. fun. I watched the little. And I love that too. holiday special. That holiday special is so so great. I still have to take the whole thing in, so we might have we might have to discuss that. Well, okay. With the documentary, I'll have to watch it too. Uh, we got a yes. felony, a felony promotion uh, has happened. We'll discuss that. We've got two emails in the mall bag, and then we'll wrap up with a voicemail on the FACPA answering machine. And we all know who that's from. Yes, can't wait for that. Question of the week. Which Star Wars character would you like to see brought from animation into live action and who should play the role? Now, we got a lot of Asajj and we got a lot of Callus. Just going to give you that warning. Yeah. But we got a, almost 20 people responded, which is great. Thank you so much for getting, getting in on our question of the week. First up, Duchess of Darksaber Light. She sends a picture of Satine Kreez side by side with Kate Blanchett, which is very much one that has been fan cast for a long time and one that we hope to see. But who knows? That's a tough pull to get her to come in and do that role. I don't think so. I think she's waiting for it. I, in fact, uh, last yeah. I saw her, she was on her balcony dressed like that. So oh, okay. Just, that's how that's like she goes to bed at night. <laughs> she's bucking for it then. <laughs> Next up is Rebel Art Empire. Here's your first Agent Callus entry. Uh, then I followed up. So Several people had to follow up and ask them to cast it, not just say who they wanted. And he said, great question. Had to really think about my best suggestion would be Sean William Scott, <laughs> a.k.a. Stifler. <laughs> I think you can pull off the look and the voice. <laughs> I mean, I see the look, but it's 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 so it's so random. It's so out there. It was like it was like he just like went through the internet looking at people and was like, Yeah, that's close enough. I don't know yeah, where he right. pulled this out of, but I like the I like the daring the cast of this. It's like uh you know, he had to really pull some strings to get Sean William Scott in the series. It's fun when people get creative with yeah. it and just, you know, go a little bit off the deep out end. of the box. So next is you, Jay. What'd you say? Uh, yeah, I, I threw. I didn't know it was going to be in the show notes, but I'm always happy to make the show. Uh, I said a Disney Plus <laughs> After Dark entry. series. Yeah. <laughs> Disney Plus After Dark series starring Asajj Ventress doing what she does, and we know what she does. And what I meant by that was, like, I'm thinking of, like, the episode where fucking homeboys in his silk PJs. And she's oh, uh, there, Duke you know, yeah. Or yeah. there's, you know, she does some sword fighting too. She's a uh, woo. Anyways, it's going to be called 50 shades of sex and dying. Certain, to, certain to be greenlit, certain to be greenlit. That could, yes, that is definitely a book for or a story for our book. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're casting who Dakota Johnson. 
<laughs> oh, that almost went everywhere. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Okay. Have you seen the Madam Web trailer? No. Woo. I'll have to take a no. look at that. No more pop culture for her. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Laybourne says Yoda, played by It's Always Sunny Frank. Uh, I think that is a great casting choice. I, I, if anybody yes. was going to choose or anybody was going to play Yoda, it's Danny DeVito. There's got to be fan art out there. I would think so. Hasn't, right? Isn't there something? Didn't he do something at one point? I feel like, well, you know what it is that I think I'm confusing? I think it was their first or second season of that show. I don't know how much you've watched that show. They did Not a much. musical called, oh, God, what's it called? Somebody's yelling at the screen or whatever they're playing right now. The Nightman or something. The Nightman Cometh or something like that. And it's this horrible, okay. it's so funny, but it's them putting on this okay. musical and it's, it gets real like, uh, like molesty and, and kind of that. And I think in that, in that play, he's playing kind of this old troll looking guy. Cause I think okay. he actually is, he is a troll. So it, it works. It's kind of like Yoda. Okay. Uh, next up JD fish. Congratulations on your win of the dark series characters or dark. I think I've winner right, winner from, from uh, Ahsoka. He said, yeah, he's an Asajj Ventress played by Tati Gabrielle. So the the only the only thing I know her from uh, is Uncharted. She was in Uncharted. She was kind of the, the main villain, or one of the main villains in Uncharted. Remind me to tell you a story, by the way, sometime about when I went and saw Uncharted. Did I tell you that story? I can tell you real quick. Okay, yeah. Share it with everybody, not just me. We got nowhere to go. Did you, did <laughs> you sit by her in the theater? Did you kiss her too? <laughs> <laughs> no, none of that. Okay. That's a nice reference. No, I went with the family, and it was in this small theater... It, real small, but you could actually get like decent food ordered and like take it into your seat and stuff. Like, oh, a, like I love get a hamburger, theaters. you get, you know, yeah. whatever pasta. So mm -hmm. we do that. The pasta and in the theater. The, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> perfect, perfect place to eat, po uh, eat pasta. That's what I want to hear. People, someone slurping up their spaghetti noodles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, well, it'd be better than soup. I guess soup would be worse. Uh, <laughs> I'll take the clam chowder. I'm in, I'm in yeah. row six. I'll take two tickets to Fifty Shades of Grey and two <laughs> clam chowders to go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. So we're just sitting there uh, eating and watching the movie has started. And there's only one aisle. So it, it's only like 10 rows across. And it's just one aisle on the right side. And so you, you have to go through. So this guy who was deep, like up against the wall on the other side, decided, yeah. oh, you know what? I'm just going to step over the aisles to get out because I don't mm -hmm. want to have to go all the way through the aisles. Yeah. So he clears the first row fine. Like Ro Roberto Benini just starts like stepping on chairs at the Oscars. It, it wasn't quite that. It was just a, he just kind of did the, you know, the step over almost like the, uh, the old high jump maneuver, the Western roll. And so he goes oh. over, then he goes to do the next one, but there's a bar that goes across there, like a handrail that, you know, for, for, you know, somebody to brace themselves, yeah. catches his foot. And fucking Superman's it out, and all his food and utensils go everywhere. Oh, he was carrying his food. <laughs> and there's probably only like 20 people in this in the theater. Four of us like draw, jump up immediately. We're like, holy shit! He stays down. I think he's embarrassed. He is right. flat out down on the ground, and it's like a concrete floor. Then you go over and find out he had like a steak knife in there. He could have fucking stabbed himself. Oh my god. Yeah. So anyway. So did 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 anyone get food shrapnel all over him? No, we got we it was, it was all away from the people. So we all just okay. went over there and helped gather all his shit up. He was so embarrassed. I felt so bad for him. Cole would say it's a five second rule. He would have ate it. He would have pulled it up <laughs> off the floor and ate it. I <laughs> guarantee you, this. he would have. I've seen him do things like that. <laughs> oh. Food does not go to waste. No. Yeah. He's he's the sarlacc pit. He's got that sarlacc pit mm -hmm. right in his, in his stomach. <laughs> yeah. I, it it just was so funny because he never even had a chance to save it. It was all out. Like I'm surprised he didn't get oh, concussed. Man. It was bad. <laughs> He's in therapy still. <laughs> yeah. Next up, uh, yet another Star Wars podcast. There are two answers to this. J Jason Manzukas as Hondo, which is a great Fucking casting choice. Perfect casting. Because yes. at some point we got to get Hondo, right? I agree. And I don't even know if I need Hondo to have makeup anymore. If it's him playing him, I'm good yeah, with that. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't have to be exact. <laughs> right. And then J Jensen Ackles as Callus, which I'm not really familiar supernatural with. Them, supernatural fame. Su supernatural. Okay. Uh, next up is J.W. Engelhart and says, Callus would be cool to see. Sorry, Callus would be cool to see his post Empire story. I agree with that. And I think we all kind of were hoping that we might see Callus pop up somewhere. Yes, we've talked about that. While not the most beloved animated characters, I think the Martez sisters could be cool in some of the mm -mm. pre A New Hope stories that got going. Jay's shaking his head. Yeah. No idea about casting, but I think those characters have live action potential. 
See, and I, and I, I said this before and I'll say it again. I disagree. They shouldn't be brought up again, and you shouldn't bring it up in an email. <laughs> J.W. Inglehart. I think this is a fake name. Maybe that's how they get redeemed, is they show up in live action are actually really good characters. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll allow it then. There's potential is what you're saying. You need good casting for that, for sure. Yeah. Uh, another callus. This is from Monica, a.k.a. Mandalorian. Uh, she said callus throw an Aussie at it. She's got a picture of Simon Baker. Yep. From now, The Mentalist. Did she say Simon Baker, or did you have to like reverse Google image this fella? Exactly correct. I had to reverse Google right? image. I was like, who the hell is this? Because he okay. looks so familiar. And uh, like I said before, it, I've seen him. I remember him having a bit part in LA Confidential years and years ago. God, that movie sold mm-hmm. now. I was like, I don't know if I know exactly who that is. So yeah, I did the little reverse Google search thing, and it was like Simon Baker. I was like, perfect. Oh, well, there's a there's a, a a small collection of women of I don't know varying ages that spent many a year swooning over this fella okay so let's bring him into the star wars universe and bring them in as fans too why not like if they if they get rescued by a firefighter they want that mask to come off and it looks like this guy yes yes they do my hero Mm -hmm. yep and then they want the whole calendar (laughs) exactly (laughs) next up padawan of christ which is a fantastic name uh i still really want to see this and it's josh holloway from uh, lost sawyer from lost you know, I'm for this casting. And also, I want to see Josh Holloway, Holloway, right? Holloway? Yeah. Holloway. And, and more things. I like this guy. Like, he popped up in, was it Ghost Protocol? Mission Impossible I was just gonna Ghost say that. Protocol. Yeah. He's at the very beginning of Ghost beginning. Protocol. Beginning. And I'm like, oh, I, I mean, he carries it. He was good. At, I wasn't a big fan of that. I was it called The Colony, the show. Uh, I never a couple watched seasons. That. It was it was okay. Um, I watched a few of the first up, you know, first season. Um, but he, like, I like seeing this guy pop up. The, he was the the paintball fight in um, Community. I don't think I saw that episode. You never saw the paintball gun fight? I don't think so. I saw Community, oh. like, I watched it, like, I think religiously for the first maybe two seasons. Mm-hmm. Maybe three. I don't remember. And then I kind of fell off with it. Maybe when they went off and then had to be brought back or something. I don't know. At some point, I kind of lost that show. They've done it more than once. I don't remember if he was in more than one of them, but I think the first one, he was like the the character that like starts it all or so. I'd have to go back and watch it. It's been a while, but those are great episodes. You should look yeah, them up. Okay. I'll have to check yeah. that out. Next up, Fanboy so shows a picture of Zendaya, which I think could work. I, I Yeah, I, I do too. I think she's kind of got uh, the right, I don't know, vibe to to pull that off. I've not seen Euphoria. Uh, it'd be like an early version of her though, right? Yeah. Well, watch it once. Actually, I've seen a couple episodes and I don't think they show anything of her in there. I, I'm not saying they don't, but I don't think that, I think I saw one or two episodes and I was just like, yeah, this is too much dick for me. <laughs> it, there's a right a amount of dick. Of- there's a right amount of dick for you. This was just a little, too yeah, much. <laughs> like me getting in the shower and out and run into a towel. <laughs> That's all I need in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the next is Darth Herring ninety six, who is the is the grand prize winner because you had mm-hmm. a great casting choice here. Sophia Butella as Asajj Ventress, and uh, this is the if if nobody or if you don't know who she is, watch Kingsman the first one, right? Yes, it's yep. the first one where she's she's the one of the villains and has just has like uh, basically blades for legs and just slices dudes in half. It's pre- it, it it fits this role so well. I think it was her first, if it wasn't her first role, it was her first, like, big role uh, okay. in a film. And also, like, I want, I want uh, you know, Filoni uh, taking over as, like, head guy here. Just, you know what? He really liked her in that movie so much. He uses her as a Saj, but she keeps the razor blade lens oh, from the Kingsman. <laughs> I could see that. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of a morph with Darth Maul. It's kind of a yeah, similar yeah, thing. Yeah. You could totally pull that off. Yep. Uh, next is Max Rebo experience. He says, I'm at a loss. I've not watched a ton of animation. I'll go with clone commander Hauser. Oh, and that fucking awesome hair he has played by a mm. de-aged. And then of course he sends a picture of fucking Doogie Hauser. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. If that's not top level fan casting, like that's just, that's real out of the box. Also, yes. do you de-age him? Or do you just ignore the fact that he's 50 something years old, but you still want to play a kid? Well, it's Hauser in the ki- the character Hauser. I know, but I want kid Hauser. You want you want Doogie the kid Hauser. version. Yeah, I see. So I want Neil Patrick Harris playing himself, not de-aged, <laughs> as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Hour says Hondo Onaka. So there's another Hondo cruising the outer rim on 40 credits a day. Could be having a tryst with Pelimoto. Seems like a good match. Oh yeah, those. Man, two. she's just like 
everyone wants to like match her up with everybody. She's like she's like in the Star Wars universe, she's known for like just being the Tinder tornado taker. I think she likes to get down. I think she likes to party. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, nothing at all. Right. He did not give me a casting choice, so missed on that one. Max Rebo back. If visions are allowed, of course they are. It's animation. I'd say Geezer Odajian, I think that's how you say that, played by a puppet. <laughs> now, do you know who this <laughs> character is? Uh, I'm going to go with he's in the the one episode that we we loved uh, with a band. You are correct. It's the episode on right. Tatooine. Was it Tatooine? Uh, I forget Rhapsody. the name of the band. Tatooine Rhapsody. The, what was ba- the, name the, the band, band was like the Star Star Wavers, maybe. Okay, let's go with that. And Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt was the the lead singer. And yeah, you were you especially were not a fan of that episode. Hated it. Yeah, uh, just a few more. Another Agent Callus. This is from Andromaca, the Scythian. So I asked her who she'd cast, and she said, anybody as long as they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, expanding on more non-Jedi stories really is a great opportunity to get more content from the Rebellion era, which is the best era. Disney did good with Mon Mothma's character. Oh, she's speaking from her lips to your ears. I, I got to tell you, fan for life, whoever this Andromaca, the Sith, say that name again? Andromaca, the Scythian. I couldn't say that more wrong if I had marbles in my mouth. <laughs> That's the best. But I'm I can do. I'm all for her giving props to Mon Mothma, even uh, in that trailer that we saw of Andor. I was like, Yeah, that's right. She sent in answers to our questions before. She always changes her username, so it's always oh it's always okay. So switching it up. I think it's two more. Uh, Dan from the Deconstructing Dad podcast. Good right? man. Yeah. Still there. Mm-hmm. I would go with Hunter from the Bad Batch, portrayed by Native American actor Rodney Grant. Uh, if you remember him, he was, um, you would first see him in uh, uh, Dance with the Wolves. He was one mm. of the Sioux. He's the one, he's the guy who's kind of uh, initially like real hesitant about Kevin Costner joining the crew. And then later okay. on, he's the one who's like uh, yelling at him as he leaves with uh, yeah. Mary, what's her face? And he's like, you know, don't you see you're my friend? And there's not a dry eye in the house. It was that, that, that was his scene. I would go with Bobby Six Killer from the show Renegade. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that. <laughs> it was like a terrible, I think that was his name. It was like a terrible, like, it just got like, it was like on after like Highlander okay. on USA in the 90s. So it was oh, just, I I was just pulling something out of my ass. Look it up. Okay. You'd love it. Okay. Finally, Danny Brown says, hear me out. I'd love to see Kane and Jarrus in live action. And I actually think Zach Efron would be really good in the role. <laughs> Is he too ripped? Because Kanan K- 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 is very slender. Yeah, yeah, he'd have to like because he's got that the uh, the Iron what's the, the the brothers the the wrestling movie coming out. Yes, and he's just bulked up for oh, that. Dude, so, that that yeah, he'd trailer have to slim looks down wild. a little bit. And also, what's wrong with the homeboy that played him? He doesn't want to do it. At least that's what he says. He he okay. he kind of shits on ever doing anything with Star Wars again. I know. Yeah, he kind of like he. It it seems like well, he he has he's got notorious like rants about you know people getting mad about Ray and stuff like real like right. legit stuff like fun Freddy you Prince know kind of funny takes yeah. yeah Freddie Prince Jr. It doesn't seem like he hates Star Wars. It just seems like he hates some of the the fans that are shitting on Star Wars. I think that's what it is, and I think he yeah. also said I'm too old to play that role anymore. Like it's over. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because who doesn't want a paycheck in a second house? <laughs> that's right. Uh, listen to Oscar Isaac when I need another house. Yeah. Right. All right. That's it for question of the week. Thank you, everybody, for all your answers. Let's get into the news. Quite a bit of news. News. Here. Oh, Taika, Taika, Taika. <laughs> Every week, new rumors. I appreciate this guy for, like, b- being the troll that he is. He just likes to stir <laughs> shit up. He does. He really does. Yeah. And he just gives, two like, zero fucks about anything. He just right. does not care. Every week it's like, how far along is the script? You know, uh, he was struggling with the third act. He was struggling with the middle of the movie. He was going to turn in a draft at the end of this calendar year, I believe. At one point was right. the rumor. Um, right. And then, hell, even at one point they said it was totally scrapped, the project. But uh, he has come out and said, because he's been doing press for that new movie of his next goal wins. It sounds like he just basically said, I'm not going to rush this. You know, I, and, and Lucasfilm seems to be okay with that. Well, it would, uh, wouldn't every fan appreciate that? Like, especially the ones that bitch about the the last three movies that, you know, they felt rushed or they weren't whatever. You know, I mean, there's a string of reasons why people hate them. And then this guy right. is like, you know, I want to take my time with it, make a good movie. But then he's also like, you know, maybe uh, the the I'll piss him off, too. 
and that stirs him up. You know, he's got to start hitting the fucking hornet's nest again. <laughs> yeah, he said, well, first of all, he said, uh, quote, at the moment, I'm developing something with Lucasfilm. I think they're going to push it until I finish these other projects. I've got about four other scripts that I'm trying to finish. I mean, who is busier than Taika Waititi? He's busy, man. I know he's doing like a Flash Gordon. Yeah. I can't remember. I, I know it's supposed to be animated, but I think I heard at one time they were going to turn it to live action. There's another, I think there was another animated movie in there. There's something called Akira he was going to do. Oh, there's yeah. A, and there's another one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, he's got a bunch of irons in the fire. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 so. the he's the Pedro Pascal of the filmmaking world because Pedro is <laughs> no so <shit>. fucking busy. <laughs> man. He then said, there's another quote. Oh, yes. He said this would be a, quote, Taika Waititi film, and it would piss people off. And he was kind of laughing. I think he's just doing it to be silly. Mm -hmm. But I think it's also as a reference to a degree to some of the mixed reviews that some of these Star Wars projects have had and also right. the mixed reviews of his own stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I've, I haven't watched any of the Thor movies, but no? I thought Ragnarok got, got pretty good praise, but it was the second one that people shit on. Is yes. that kind of how it worked? Yes. Okay. That's exactly how it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, this guy has done Star Wars. You know, he's he was the voice yeah. of IG Eleven. He directed the finale of the first season of Mandalorian. First season. He's got yeah. he's got familiarity with the universe. He's done more than dipped his toe in it, right? And he and he certainly feels like he can take on any. He can work for any studio. He can take on any project as long as they kind of let him be himself. It seems yeah, he, like that's kind of the. Well, he's also like one of those guys that you'd want to work with, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be on a fun set. Very creative. Too. He doesn't. Yeah. Creative. He doesn't come off as an asshole. Right. Um, you know, if he's taking his time making a good Star Wars movie, leave him the fuck alone and let him. Yes. Right. Well, and so and to your point, he, he, he the other quote he said was, it's something I want to get right. I want to capture the joy and entertainment of those early ones like Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So I'm trying to figure out. Trying to figure that out, but it'll happen. So it's the sequel to Solo. Okay, got it. <laughs> that was just on the other night. Fuck, it's still good. Like yeah, a lot. Is. Still like that film. There was an interview recently with Alden Ehrenreich where he was talking about how just how much shit he took for that movie and how it really right. like stumped his career uh, for a bit. And it was sad. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Because he's a good actor. And I think he's getting a lot of praise now for the Oppenheimer role and all that stuff, although I've not seen that movie yet. Well, and the, the Netflix movie. What the hell was that called? Cocaine Bear? For Bear? him and the girl from... Um, Oh, what that's the other it? one, yes. Cocaine Bear yeah, was the other it. one he was in, but yes, you're right. I know what you're talking about uh, on Netflix. Was, I can't was, remember the name of it. It was it was decent. Yeah. It's getting a lot of accolades, but I was just uh, acted, like well acted, but the ending okay. was just kind of like, oh, okay. But no, yeah. really good. Really good. He's good in it. Hardest thing to do, wrap up a story. You right. struggle with it all the time. <laughs> Next up is the Ray film. This is one that, you know, of course, is supposed to be next in the queue. This is the, the Jedi Order film about Rey. And they're still saying May 2026. By God, that is a long time from now. But yet it's also not that long from now. You know what I mean? Like, you got to get fucking going on this thing. Right. Well, if they're shooting some of it in the volume, then a lot of the work's been done pre-viz, right? Well, I'm sure pre-viz the whole movie. Uh, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility. They they do this stuff years in advance where they they plot everything out and they do this the the effects and they've so they got to do what if they if they start shooting in March shoot six months they've still got a year year oh, and it's a gonna half. be tight yeah it's gonna be tight but yeah it's I think gonna it, be I tight think it could happen yeah yeah we'll see I don't know she Daisy really recently came out and made a couple of comments about it um yeah I think they said I think originally it was supposed to start in. April, it might push back. So it might not start until the fall. I mean, it, it's hmm. they haven't even done casting yet. You know, they haven't even started that, at least as far as we know. Well, they haven't announced casting. True, true. But she said, the story is really cool. I'm waiting to read a script because obviously I don't have any other updates. It's not what I expected, but I'm very excited. Hmm. Mm -hmm. A little different story. I think, here's my prediction. Because I, I finished Rise of the Skywalker, right? I finished that one today. Yeah, because uh, I, I went through the, the new trilogy over the last week at work. Okay. And the scene in the end where they're fighting the Emperor and then, you know, one dies, the other dies. And there's a, you know, he runs to her and brings her back to life. But he's holding her stomach as he kisses her. Yep. And I'm like, he fucking just made her pregnant. Put a baby in there. Yep. That's what the Skywalkers do. There don't need to be penetration. There just needs to be thought. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> More what? on that coming up in a future episode. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With special guests. Uh, yeah, it is. That's a good theory because he's 
he certainly puts his life force into her to bring her back, but little do we know, maybe he was splitting that right. life force up. Mm-hmm. You put a little bit of him in there too. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Could be. And it also it was one of those things where it's like, is this going to be a standalone or is this the start of a new trilogy? You know, is this episode 10 or is this just its own thing? And she said, I know the storyline for one film. That's not to say that's all it is, but that's what I was told about. So that mm-hmm. makes you think, oh, so maybe there is more than just the one. Maybe it's one of those wait and sees. Yeah, it's for more than one. I would. Think well, you think so. Disney doesn't want to make money? They don't want well, to make a billion dollars on a movie that people are going to shit talk regardless? Like, psh, <laughs> yeah, there's more coming. <laughs> yeah. Keep talking shit. Go see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I feel like uh, Mara Jade is the character that comes up the most, or at least like top three mentions whenever it comes up about like people wanting to bring a character from the books and comics yeah. and stuff into action. She And she's been on my radar a little bit more lately because I've been reading Heir to the Empire. I'm still oh, not done good. with the last book. I need to ship Man. more. I'd get more reading done. The last book? The last of the Heir to the Empire. Heir to the Empire is the first book. What? No, there, well, there's the, it's the trilogy. So Heir to the Empire yeah. and then whatever the other two are called. I just meant that okay. whole trilogy, whatever they call it. Okay. So I have not gotten through the third book. I have to I have to tell you, when I'm looking at your notes, you've got Vanessa Marshall quote. When I first read that, I thought it said Vanessa Marcel. And I was like, isn't she a little too old to play <laughs> Mara Jade? <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. Wasn't that the gal who was in, oh, God. She was in was The she Rock. She like Melrose Place or something? Yeah, she was in yeah. 90210, I think. And then which I think she okay. came from General Hospital. But then she was the girlfriend of Nicolas Cage in The Rock where he says, what's he say? Was her name Paula? Paula was the prom queen. He goes, winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Fuck the prom queen. queen. Yeah. Right. She also, for a time, was with Corey Feldman. Fun fact. <laughs> wow. Did that just did that just taint her for you? That killed everything. <laughs> so yes, Vanessa Marshall, uh, voice of Hera and Rebels. Mm-hmm. She has just tossed her hat in the ring. She had a recent quote where she said, I would love to play Mara Jade. Can you call Dave Filoni and just let him know that I'd love to play Mara Jade? I think we would all just like to be in live action in some way. Haven't had the opportunity to do it yet, but my background is in live action. React. Hmm. What do you think? I saw I saw the the quote and the picture of her, and I wouldn't be against it, but I feel like if they're gonna cast that, like I don't know, that seems to be like someone you're gonna want to recognize, but maybe not. Maybe the character, like you get more not recognize the character and just take who it is, what it is, you know. So I don't she's know. Got I, that, I'm, she's got that auburn hair that is what yeah. you see depicted of Mar- Mara Look, Jade. If every redheads time. are throwing their name and and then I'm just throwing my name in there too. Sure. Yeah. Fucking your Hux's cousin. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Just Sans the traitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the good one. Yeah. <laughs> you got a podcast in the Star Wars world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she could pull it off. I mean, the. I, at some point, since they're doing all this heir to the empire references in Ahsoka and stuff, you're you're and you would think yeah. somehow in this all this crossover, we're gonna see Luke again somehow, maybe. So Mara Jade would make sense if they want to bring that character in, but it always seems to be kind of this. I don't know. She's a bit of a white whale character for for a lot of people. Like they've been waiting for her to show up forever. So and anyway, I wanted to also say a, another shout out to our friends at the Hyperspace Heroes podcast because they had Vanessa Marshall shout on. Out. Uh, mentioned that last time. And I hadn't listened to the episode when I when we talked last time, but I listened to it. Really good interview. Uh, they touch on a lot of fun stuff from animation. She seems like a really cool guest. I guess they met her at a con, and that's how oh, they really? ended up getting her on the show. Yeah. So shout out to them. We'll have to have them on, and she she can they can be her vicariously for us. There you go. They yeah. can serve that we'll, role. We'll cast them as our Mara Jade on the show. <laughs> okay, that works. You guys hear that? It's on you. Yep. Okay, one last news item, and that is that uh, there is the Disturbance in the Forest documentary that is is dropping. It's actually been out doing kind of the festival circuit for a bit. I actually even reached – this is, by the way, this is the documentary on the Star Wars holiday special. Yeah. Which you you have not seen the holiday special in a very long time, right? Right. Bits, I remember bits and pieces. I'm not quite sure if I've ever actually sat through the whole thing, but uh, I know I've seen bits and pieces, and I can't say that I've loved any of it. <laughs> It's really, really bad. <laughs> That's the one with the ugly. There's the there's the gif of the ugly little baby Wookiee, right? Where it's got like the yes. teeth. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. But it, <laughs> his grandfather, who is Chewie's dad, I guess, right? I think is a fucking dirty bastard. So you'll just uh, you gotta watch it. 
Like 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 that dirty uncle that you'd never let your nieces around like privately. Yeah. There's a guy who there's a guy who shows up and gives him some tapes. It's basically VR porn. <laughs> yeah. In the late 70s. Okay. I'm telling you you got to see it. It has so many weird little segmented pieces. Do you have any beta? Pieces. Do you have a beta? Do you have a beta player? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say would beta even been there by then? I guess it would have been. But Yeah. It's so weird. Like there are so many scenes where you're like, what in the fuck is this? I wonder if this is one of those specials where like a really good editor could go in there and make something out of it. Ooh. Well, <laughs> so, so a little shout out to a podcast I did a while back with uh, some of the other members of the Padawan podcast network where we went through and did a full breakdown Yeah, and, and I tweeted it out Which recently. Is pretty funny. It's pretty funny. And it's um, one, at one point somebody says, I think somebody just walked into the writer's room and dumped a bag of cocaine on the table and went, go nuts, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, somebody made the joke that there's some poor intern who had to edit it down from 30 hours to two because I'm sure they just <laughs> <Okay>. kept going. <laughs> it is wild. So it's worth seeing once just so you go through that experience, but it's I wouldn't go back and watch it again. It, it's almost like that same writer's room. They were all in costume, <laughs> and then they were so high, they just said, fuck it, we'll act it we'll out. We'll film it. And then someone had a video camera in the corner, and it was the same time like the cast from Star Wars came walking in just to see where they were at. Right. So they get thrown into scenes. I mean, it looks like Luke's been hitting that fucking sneef too, because he oh, yeah. looks all coked up. It's it's hilarious. Uh, it's 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 definitely worth watching once if you haven't seen it or it's been a long time you don't remember it because you'll you'll go back and go I don't I don't remember this at all. The blow is strong with this. <laughs> so I it, I mentioned before that I had reached out to the filmmakers uh, a while yes. back, wondering when yeah. it was going to come out. And Jeremy Coons got back to me and said, um, you know, oh, we're you know we're doing the festivals, and then eventually mm -hmm. we're looking to get some sort of distribution deal. And now they got it. So December fifth, which is what Tuesday, yeah, they are going to drop that on Apple TV because of course they're not going to drop it on Disney Plus. No, no, no one wants this. Like this is, well, no one wants, Disney Plus has the special, right? No. You can watch the, oh, I thought they had the holiday special. Well, out. when I watched it a couple of years ago for the purpose of recording that episode, it was not on there. I don't think they associate with it at all. Hmm. I know it was like a CBS broadcast, so maybe they don't have the rights to it. You have to watch it on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. And it's okay. funny too, because it'll be like, tonight's episode of, what was it? Tonight's episode of uh, The Incredible Hulk is preempted by preempted. or something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've been talking to one of the people who was on that podcast we did where we reviewed it was the Athorian historian. And I reached yeah. out to him and said, Hey, when, when this doc comes out, you want to join us for it? And he said, for sure. So he'll be on, we'll do that probably in the next, you'll hear that in the next two weeks. Cause once awesome. it, once it drops, you and I'll record with him and, and yeah. uh, get into that. So that'll be fun. That'll so be fun. then after that, we're going to talk a little something special that you're going to go do that you won't let the listening audience know until it's already been done. I'm just teasing it, but that's, yeah. that's our next episode. Well, oh. we're going to record on that next week. I'm going Saturday to this. Okay. So, so our next episode is the, the, what we're teasing that is, you know, we'll just say a strip tease. Um, <laughs> and then the one after that will be the f disturbance of the force. Yep. And then the one after that is going to be our discussion on Christina. The, yeah. With Christina yep. and the, the, or the, the, Getting into getting into conceptions, let's yeah. just say. Right. <laughs> Should so, be fun. It's a lot of fun stuff. I mean, that's the nice thing about, I guess, having, you know, these windows of no current content being released is we get to do a lot of wild shit. Make so. up our own shit. <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of content and Star Wars and all that, let's talk about our boy Filoni. Uh, we here all at right. FACPA, big fans of Dave Filoni. Yes. Uh, half of the Favloni duo and... Um, He's brought a lot of great content to Star Wars. Maybe a few meh things as well. Resistance. Mm. Yeah, all of Resistance. <laughs> I like. I, I feel like Resistance is Filoni's um, holiday special. <laughs> like that's it could that's be. what he wants to deny. It was just a. It was a really bad fever dream. Because <laughs> well, he was involved but didn't drive it. Right? Isn't that what we determined? Right. He, yeah. So uh, he has to feel partly responsible. It's so funny because on Twitter, every now and again, you'll see these posts where people are like, still love resistance. And I'm like, you do? Do you? I know. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's one of those corporate things. Like Disney's like, we got the new movies coming out. We need a cartoon to go along with it. Yeah. And that's what happened. So there was like, yeah. it was no love. There was no love in it. Yeah. There was something about it that just didn't work. Yeah. Kaz. Kaz? Yeah. Well, we've seen what his dad's like. Uh-huh. That prick. All right. So Dave, 
uh, just got a big promotion. He was named Chief Creative Officer at Lucasfilm. And so this basically means that he will be involved from the beginning on all Star Wars projects. Yes. Not just kind of giving advice, but also like helping to kind of s- steer the creatives in the right direction, perhaps keep them on track with the overall vision, which is a big one that we've been wanting, you know, to see. Yeah. Um, so a bit of a change there. And and it was funny because he, uh, in an interview, he's been doing a bunch of interviews lately. There's a big Vanity Fair one. There's a couple others. But he, he's, he likened his role to being on the Jedi Council for helping kind of guide Star Wars stories. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the analogy you want? Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> they kind of fucked up. But I feel like there's no cloud with his judgment. That's, that's okay. I'm going to go with that. I'm hopeful right. that he is. he's the wise Yoda, no cloud, he sees all, and only greatness is coming. Maybe he's what Qui-Gon would have been on the council had he accepted. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> Along with his promotion, though, too, one that's notable is uh, is Carrie Beck, who is named head of development. So she's now kind of the one that's going to go out there and find all these people to make Star Wars stories. You're right. So the combination of these two promotions mm-hmm. certainly seems like it's offloading a lot of Kathleen Kennedy's duties. And so it just makes you think, okay, so is this like slowly – we're just – are the YouTubers right? Is she getting fired? <laughs> uh, well, right now, like I see her, like she has nothing but a calculator on her desk and she's in charge of Christmas parties. <laughs> like, she's playing, she's playing solitaire. Yeah. <laughs> what? She just keeps looking over at her phone and it's not ringing anymore. <laughs> you know what guys? I'm going to take off early today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a, a long lunch. You guys good? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I, I don't I don't see her. Do you see her going anywhere anytime soon? I don't. I and I've not complained much about her. Like overall, you know, I think we've had this discussion before. Like she's been around a long time. She's produced a lot of really good movies. So she's not terrible. I just think it's, you know, it, it was it was a lot. And I think that's why they've upgraded these two roles is because the Star Wars like the production stuff is just expanding so much. Yeah, and I think, but I, I think what some people are considering is, is this somewhat of a succession plan? So, so she'll do this for a couple of years, and then yeah. that kind of allows her to step out because she's she's groomed these two into taking over the company essentially, and and then it becomes mm-hmm. much like DC Comics, right? With with James Gunn and what's his face. Ben, you you say that succession, and all I can think about is the HBO show, <laughs> and I hope it's every bit like that. So is I who would be who is Carrie Beck the? Uh, oh my God, I've forgotten all their names. Yeah, me too. There's the Kieran um, Culkin, and then there's the uh, Jeremy Strong, and then there's uh, Sarah Sarah Snook, Shiv. Yep, Shiv. Yep, and uh, and then of course, what's his face, Al- Alan Ruck from uh, Yes, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of the joke. The brother that really, yeah, he, he's just the one that, like suckles on dad's nips the whole time. Just <laughs> right, as long as he's living good. That whole that whole storyline with him thinking he should be president and 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 his My God. the the gal that he wants to marry and all that is just it is so uncomfortable. Yeah, she, well, she's a paid. Well, she was like an time, escort. She was like a high priced escort. Yeah, yeah, and then but the, and then she's so like, oh no, I'm kind of in. No, I'm not really in. Like she is so uncomfortable being there. But mm-hmm. like, kind of feels like, well, this is my best play, so I'm just gonna keep going with this. And, and he it just goes to show like how out of society. Like, like the, the other ones are aware of shit, but he is just... Oh, he lives in the, a fantasy The fact world. that he thinks that, you know, there's a chance for him to become president. Yeah. And he's like, what's he, what's he rate? Like, he goes up to 1%. He keeps he trying to get, get to 1%. 1%. I think he's always right. less than that was, that was a success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Disney's got a better chance. Lucasfilm has a better chance than that. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. All right, so I kind of want to go through maybe uh, some of the pros and cons of, the, of these mm. these moves, particularly the Filoni okay. move. And so, I mean, one of the things we just talked about a second ago, and, and we've talked about a ton, is just the cohesion. Right. Something that the sequels really sorely missed was a cohesive plan from start to finish. And and so having Filoni there to kind of fit everything together, I think is going to make a an impact, uh, you know, allowing right. allowing these stories to do their own thing and be creative. I mean, like we joked about with Taika, he's going to go do some crazy shit, but mm-hmm. Filoni's and Filoni's task with doing things like, okay, you can do all this, but like, this has to be kind of like this to fit in with the rest of the whole storyline. What if Taika's plan is a $200 million budget holiday special? It's just a remake. <laughs> I wouldn't it's be like, surprised. It's like Gus Van Sate redoing cycle, like frame <laughs> by frame. <laughs> it's just I, would, <laughs> I would not be surprised, but it makes me think too. Do you think like Filoni is like on the phone to Feige going, how did you do this with him and Thor? Right. How did you keep him like in line with everything else? You know, <laughs> I love Taika, but I, I could imagine he's probably a, a challenging to 
people like that to try to keep everything yeah. in check, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I've heard him, you know, kind of mention before that that Dave Filoni, that he never starts a project or or whatever without having the end goal in mind. Like, mm-hmm. where is this gonna where's the story going? And I think some people just kind of wing it. You know, some people make stories and go, well, we'll figure it out along the way. But I think he's he yeah. said his MO is always to know where it's going because that's that's gonna help drive everybody, you know, know where the characters' motivations are. Yes. It's like a thing like Balin. You have to know where Balin's story is going or else how do you even portray that? Because you don't even know where to guide him. Yeah, because we don't know where he's going, but I, I have faith that Filoni does. Yeah. I would certainly hope so. So, I mean, all that's great stuff. And and mm-hmm. I think you can make an argument for Filoni being one of, if not the best storytellers of the Star Wars Disney era. I Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, we love Gilroy a lot. Yes. But it's a very specific piece that mm-hmm. he's kind of doing, you know, whereas I think Filoni's a little bit more broad. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that he's bringing in like his own mythology. Like he's he's mm-hmm. he he's really good at like this is Star Wars. This is what you recognize, but he's expanding it. You know, I guess for lack of a better way to say it, for a new generation, there's new stuff that's going to be in it, new stuff to look forward to, and you're going to have a bunch of people arguing that this isn't my Star Wars. But we're talking another ten years down the line, so it's fifty years. Like you don't want the same shit. Like let's have some new players, new stuff going on, big galaxy. Well, right, and and I mean he's he's. He is Lucas's disciple, so mm-hmm. he has he's entrenched in where this came from. Where you know why did George start writing these stories? What was what were all the allegories? What was all the what were all the themes? Right. All those things he knows all that stuff. So you you feel like it's in good hands with him because it's a, yeah. a somebody who's so in tune with the the original creator. Now that being said, to go to the possible cons, <laughs> is he too much of a disciple? Is he going to be so stuck in that Skywalker saga era? Because mm. because if you think about it, he's basically been involved in, in stuff that's gone from what? like, uh, it, Well, because he, he wasn't really involved in Phantom Menace stuff. So pretty much Clone Wars. So like 20, a, 20 BBY to like 15-ish ABY because he wasn't really heavily right. involved in the sequels. I, I think he was in the story group, but I don't think he was as heavily involved. So we're talking about a 35-year-ish, 40-year-ish yeah. space that he's operated in. Is he going to be comfortable working outside those, like like Mangold's film and things like that, other projects that are yeah. way out of that timeline? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I to see what he's shooting for with a, a you know a second season of Ahsoka, that's all new ground, right? It is, but it's all still sort of in the same. It's still in that time frame, yeah. but it's 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 going to be all new, right? And maybe it's a, a good way for him to dip his toes into something new, is where he's still staying in the same pond, so right. to speak. But yeah. I mean, he he's done way more good than he has bad. So I, I I have nothing to say, nothing bad to say. And every time you see him, the way he talks so passionately and he believes in it, like you were just talking about him and Lucas, and I'm thinking, like, what were like their conversations like? Like you would think, like you and I, you know, if we were together and we were like, you, know, let's what are we gonna do the pot, whatever. We probably have it over a drink and talk, sure. you know, have some good times, whatever. But those two are probably drinking a glass of fucking milk. <laughs> Like dead ass sober, <laughs> just being geeks <laughs> in rooms for hours on end. Yeah, in that yeah. Uh, in that in that main office or built or mm-hmm. that building, that house on the Skywalker <laughs> Ranch, just going yes. through everything over and over. I mean, because it's a it's a him and Carrie Beck, they both kind of like started at, at a lower level and have really worked their way up through the organization. Right. So they're they're very. I feel like when you have somebody or people like that at the helm. They're not just coming in at a top level position and saying, "This right. is how I've done it everywhere else." They really know how that you know group operates and how that mm-hmm. story operates. The other thing I thought too is is just that does this new role take him away from doing uh, his own storytelling too much? Because he's obviously right. very entrenched in the whole Mandoverse stuff. He's doing that film, potentially trying to do a season two of Ahsoka. You know, all the while being the head of the Jedi Council of Lucasfilm. Right. So. It, is he wearing too many hats, Jay? You know, he's got the cowboy hat. He's got the penguins yeah. hat. Is he got too many? <laughs> I don't think he can shut it off. Like, yeah. I really don't. I think, like, he, you know, whether he's taking a shit or he's in a boardroom meeting. On an airplane. Scripting, or he's on the fucking volume set getting ready to shoot. Like, it's just, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, it's always on. So, someone comes up to him and says, hey, Fav- Favreau has a question regarding season five about this. And he's like, dog. You know, I'll deal with, you know, I think he's always just 
able to answer and and move on. Like he doesn't, and I don't know the guy. I don't I don't pay attention to whether he's got hobbies or anything. But yes. He always comes across as like a guy that just is always. I don't know. He fucking never leaves Lucasfilm. <laughs> you know, they probably brought him in for a meeting. He's like uh, Spielberg, like back in the you know the story where he like snuck onto his set, right, and became a filmmaker. Like this is like Filoni's never left. He probably doesn't even have a fucking uh, a lanyard with a badge on it. <laughs> They've never realized, <laughs> so he he just doesn't leave. <laughs> he's not actually being paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's not even on the payroll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I think he can do that all. I mean, he's one of those people. I feel like a lot of times people who are kind of doodlers, like he is, right, means their ideas are always flowing. Yeah, you know, he's always sitting there scribbling down and making drawings of shit all the time. Every time you see like footage of him in a meeting, he's sitting there drawing pictures of shit the whole time. Yeah, which I think if you were running the meeting, you'd be like, hey, Dave. Yeah. You, you with us? You, yeah. <laughs> now he has to be that guy, like tells everyone else to stop doodling. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm sure back in the day, they'd be like, uh, Dave, anything you want to share with the rest of the group? And he's like, yeah, this, I created this new character. I have a whole story arc planned right. out. I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Ahsoka season two for a second. It, it's nothing's been greenlit. Right. Rosario Dawson says he's got an outline that she knows of. He doesn't have, you know, full uh, scripts or anything. But it just makes me think about the timeline of getting it all done. If, in fact, his movie will be the second movie of 2026, which is what they're what they're kind of implying, uh, but they haven't said. That's a short timeline. That's three years from now. And yeah. you still have to do a bunch of stuff in between. Like you've got Skeleton True, Skeleton True, Skeleton True crew, yeah. the true crew. <laughs> That's later next year. Now that we're hearing, we'll talk about that more next week. Uh, Mando season four, which obviously is Favreau's baby, but still, that's that's coming probably first half of twenty five, I'd guess. Yeah. Uh, they got. They, they, I don't think they're going to do a second season of Boba at this point. Um, I doubt it. It's possible, but I doubt it. And then you've got season two of Ahsoka, which you know maybe that's early twenty six, late twenty five, early twenty six. There's just a lot there to also do the, all that stuff, and then also have a film being you know cast, uh, written, and made. I don't think there's any time pressure though. Like I know they want to start putting films in theater, but maybe it just gets pushed. No reason to rush it. Yeah, like if they're spending this time building the story and they've got a few things to do yet before they get to the film, and I don't see Disney Wanda. I mean, they tried doing two Star Wars movies in a year when they did Solo and Rise of Skywalker, and you know for whatever reason it's not their fault, but that failed, right? So uh, I, I would be surprised if they did two films for 26. Probably the Ray movie and then 27. So maybe like. Ray, are we, are we thinking May or December? Because I, I think the because they've had they success with the, the Christmas movies. So, and with the with what's happening now, I see them pushing to Christmas of twenty six, and then maybe summer of twenty seven. Oh, I see. So maybe the Ray movie is December. They move it from May yeah. to December. Yeah, that's possible. Well, and, and the thing you mentioned with Solo, it was it was the Last Jedi that it followed. It was six oh, months okay. after Last Jedi, and everybody kind of had there was those mixed reactions to Last Jedi. And then it was, you know, horribly marketed. So uh, it, it just mm-hmm. it was always set up for failure. Again, saw it the other day. It was still, still a good movie. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of stuff that he had sitting out there from season one of Ahsoka that we still need to have movement on. And I don't know that you handle all that. You have. I feel like you have to have a season two, or else you're throwing a lot of that shit into the movie. Because obviously, Thrawn's right. back. Ezra's back. Ah- ah- Ahsoka and Sabine are stuck in Peridia. Uh, what else is how ha- oh, you got the Mortis gods thing and Balin. I mean, there's so right. many things there, story leads that are out there that mm-hmm. you could certainly throw it in a movie and then just say, this is just the first movie. We're going to do more of this, you know, particular era. Oh, sure. Yeah. But I'm just wondering how they're going to, how those things are all going to line up. I just, I, I feel like I need to be on the call when they talk about the timeline. Cause I need to know what's coming. <laughs> I don't think you're asking for too much and I better be on the call too. <laughs> I think we, we should be able to dial into these. Guys, we'll mute our phones. It's fine. Right. We just want to yeah. listen. We, we will give you our input on our own show if you want to listen, but just let right. us listen now. Yeah. The only other thing I thought was I thought, well, maybe if he's got all these projects going on at once, maybe he's going to have to go the Peter Jackson route. He's going to have to film them all at the same time, oh, you know, yeah. like Lord of the Rings, and he'll just have all these different projects just going back on. Back him in one of, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Hold back uh, filming a little bit on Ahsoka Season 2. Yeah. So we can just write the season two and the film and then just go into production. I think it's just all there. Then you've got yeah. all these actors locked in. So you got them going, you know, yep. just keep it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there was a funny thing that came up also in that Vanity Fair article that was um, they both Hayden and Filoni were talking about, you know, Anakin's involvement and all that stuff. 
And neither of them would say if it was the world between worlds. So our argument right. is not settled. They were both like, they both like basically said like, is it the world between worlds? Is it just in Ahsoka's mind? Yep. Because one of the things Filoni said is, that makes me still think that it's in her mind, but we'll get to that some other time. We'll have a very deep <laughs> conversation about it some other time. But as he mentions how I don't ever want to touch like anything. Lucas wrapped up the Anakin story. I'm not going right. to touch anything that. beyond yeah. that. Right. So that always makes me think, well, then I don't, you know what I mean? I mean, I guess you could still say that's an older or like a previous version of it. But if he wrapped it up, why you got him in three episodes of this? <laughs> now, I know it's like it's going back and showing him leaving the tapes or whatever. Yeah, but the, the fucking stuff. show ends with him in this other galaxy standing watching <laughs> over them as force ghosts. So, I mean, we've moved beyond everything Lucas has been involved with. That's true. It's a good yeah. point. The only other thing I was going to say on the Filoni thing is just kind of where does this leave us? And by us, I mean FACPA. Because we know that Dave listens to our show and gets yep. and, and he gets ideas from our discussions. Of course he does. And so does that mean he's going to finally be reaching out to us directly? I will, think so. Will he wait till we release the From a Certain Point of Skew book before he really reaches out to us? I don't know. I'm fine with either way. <laughs> you know, just as long as, he, you know, the, the phone line's open. So he should be calling in any day. Or maybe now. Carrie Beck's going to reach out to us because she's going to be like, guys, we need right, to bring you in. She's going to get us for development. Yeah. We're going to get in that <laughs> secret powwow writer's room, you know, like the storyboard. <laughs> oh my God. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Dave. <laughs> what they're going to do is they're going to like, they'll bring everyone in first. And they'll be like, all right, we're going to bring these two idiots in <laughs> and everything they say, everything you are, you have to go the other way with it. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're the- That's how we know it's working. <laughs> right. Let these two idiots pitch for six hours. Yeah. Or is, and it, then is go- it like, do they start with us or do they end with us? They end with us? Right. Yeah. End with us. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. The hiring process, they end with us. Yeah. <laughs> no, but wait, stick with me. So then <laughs> just keep going on and on and on. <laughs> no, we got more slides here. We'll go through them all. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, congrats, Dave. Congrats, Carrie Beck. And yes. uh, now we can move on to the mall bag. So, oh, yeah. Email number one from Luther Smith. Okay, so you guys know I love the show. Thanks, Luther. I appreciate the full 60% and sometimes more. Thank you. Hear that, Max? Ah. Rebo? (laughs) Yeah, he does not appreciate the 60%. Like, I think he's... I'm under the impression he thinks that we should not even start at 60%. I He probably thinks 6%. Well, I think he probably thinks that's where we're at. Yeah, we're that's we're we're liberally giving ourselves sixty percent. Yes, I know. He's thinking. He's like, it's a six. Take the zero off, yeah. and you're probably about right. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the full sixty percent uh, that you give we the listeners. But having the Grant Markham on I at know. the end of the episode made this one of my favorites. Go ahead, Ginger. I know what you're going to say. What are you going to say? I don't even know what I'm going to say here. I'm, you know what? I'm happy that, that, and I know Luther, of course, and that's probably what I, I'm going to say what he's not. Now I know what he means. He's a huge fan of Grant. Ah. And I, and I, I can see why, you know, he was entertained by that, but like, I'm a huge fan of Grant. I get, I, I'm entertained by that stuff. And when he sent me all those recordings and just that little bit, but then I start hearing all these other things. Uh, I just, I, it, I spent like, I don't know, maybe an hour or two, like putting them all together and where I stole something. Like he had. I think he sent me like there was probably 20 or so different recordings oh, and I would Jesus. pull bits out of each and make them match up or do whatever, just playing around. So it was fun. It was worth it just to just to hear the, you know, Jason is a penis. Jason has, has yeah. no penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the other one. Every time he catches himself saying something incorrectly is always kind of funny, too. Uh huh. Yeah. It was already a great episode, and I really enjoyed the conversation with Ro, as I do whenever he's on. But damn, Grant had me cracking up at the end. Good stuff, guys. Keep doing what you do. We'll keep listening. Thanks. Thank you, Luther. Thank you. Good to hear from you, Luther. Speaking of the devil, email number two from Max Rebo Experience. Always keeping us on our toes. Uh, he did yep. just write us a recent review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hmm. Final prediction. Will Grogu speak in Mando Season 4, or will it be saved for the end of Dave's movie? What do you think? If, if those are the two options, I think that, yeah, probably the movie. But I feel like it's going to be one of those, like, Maggie Simpson things. I kind of want it to be. Yeah? I, I'm going to be honest. I kind of don't want him to speak. I, 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 I feel I, I really like the cooing and all that. And, and I just, mm-hmm. I don't want him to, like, start talking and it's a mimicked version of Yoda or something like that. I'm not going to dig that. So I would be totally fine with him not talking. Well, at what point? I guess it's going to depend on when the, the Grogu uh, toys stop selling, you know, and then they turn them like, uh, you know, disgruntled Elmo? 
teenage uh, Groot, you know, where like he plays video games and he doesn't want to do anything. You know, we'll get 20 years of that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say we're going to turn the uh, the next round of, uh, of of Grogu dolls are going to be like Elmo. Like like Grogu on the potty? <laughs> Feed me Grogu. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just something about it. I kind of like where he's at. I don't think he needs to speak. There were times during season three where I thought he was going to, and I was like, no, don't do it, because I'm just i I'm, I'm just wondering how that's going to come across. Maybe he'll get murdered before he has a chance to speak. <gasps> wow. Oh, God. <laughs> So is is um Max Rebo is he Jimmy the Hat? Yes. Okay. Says so if you're looking for a Star Wars podcast that loves listener participation, these are the guys for you. Yeah. Thank you. Love it. Appreciate Thank it. You. Always. Anybody wants to write us a review, love it. Appreciate it. That's it for the mall bag. Note to Josh Tufts, I got your questions. We'll cover those next week. We'll do it in the mall bag next week. Yeah, Josh. So thank you for saying that in. All right. It's fact by answering machine time. Voicemail Here number one from your guy and mine. RFB. I feel wrong doing this sober. Like we need to like crack open a whiskey, start rocking in our chair. You know, we really got to set the mood here. He certainly is drinking enough whiskey for all of us in this video clip. Oh, okay. Or audio clip. Also, I just want to make a funny note that um, did you see him like basically subtweeting Roe and us uh, talking about the the citation of uh, of uh, how you, you pronounce tantive for it's tantive v for. Yes. Yes. So he, he put the whole explanation. He goes, "It's okay to be wrong." <laughs> <laughs> didn't tag any of us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh well played all right let's hear what he has to say okay stop as always Darth Matthews and Jason RP so I'm sitting here on a Tuesday evening sipping some whiskey and of course got some random thoughts I didn't want to leave my back the boys high and dry appreciate hope it. somebody else mm-hmm. has got something in the mall bag whether written or spoken for the podcast. Random thought number one. <laughs> Disney don't make Star Wars. Lucasfilm does. Oh, okay. <laughs> he wants to get the, there's there's three. I listened to this. There's three thoughts that he throws out. So that was okay. number one. So stop bitching about Disney. It's Lucasfilm that makes Star Wars. Don't mistake that. Yeah, and I, I know what he's saying, but let's be real here. Disney didn't pay $4 billion to buy them to be like, you know what? You run off on your own and do your own thing. Exactly. There's a, there's a say happening. I agree. There's a corporate mandate. Right. Okay. Random thought number two. Want to learn how to read Arbesh? I can show you how because I can read it. I don't need no fucking translated. <laughs> Just read it. All of a sudden, I've got, like, the only way he'll teach us if it's, like, Armageddon and we're playing with animal crackers on his belly. <laughs> uh, he There was something he did. Well, he posted a screenshot the other day of what Twitter looks like with Arabesh, which I thought was funny. Oh, really? But he also was saying, like, there was something else he was talking about. Where he was like, I could just read that shit straight. I don't need a translator. I just love Jeez. that. I love that. That's tough to do, man. You think like um, it's like his superpower? He drinks whiskey and he just it's like reading the Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix. Like he just sees it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he's sober, he can't read or match at all. Put that on a resume. <laughs> yeah. Languages: English, Arbesh, and Klingon. Klingon. Yep. <laughs> Random thought number three. Here we go. Why the fuck are there left lane drivers? What the fuck are people doing in the left lane when there ain't nobody to pass? See it all the time on the way home from work. What the hell are these assholes doing? I even pass a fair bunch of them. <laughs> so here we go. Several things going on here. I've heard him. I've, I've seen him tweet about this before. He gets real mad about people driving the left lane. So my question is, I guess it's if somebody's kind of parked in the left lane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're not... They're not going fast enough in the left right. lane. And I get if you're on a two lane road or whatever, you know, you're on a two lane road going one way. Yeah. You get over because you're not passing anybody actively. Does it really matter if nobody else is around? Not really. I don't but, think so. But I get that like he's saying, oh, you should get over. Sure. Yeah. The only issue is if they're slow. If they're slow and you have to pass them on the right, yes, that's annoying. They should get the fuck over. I get that. And I think that's what he's bitching about. I'm a left lane driver. Stay in the left lane all the way. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I typically unless, do. Unless someone comes up behind me, but rarely. Like I, you know, 70 in Michigan, I'm usually doing at least 80. 
Well, you have a long commute, so, so you got to be. Yes. You got to be. So otherwise, I'd be weaving all the time. So I just stay in the left lane, and usually it just works out just fine. Well, I, I think if you're aware of people coming up behind you, mm-hmm. then the, you are totally okay to be driving in the left lane. But if you're just going to sit there and park, that's fucking bullshit. Like if you yes. sit there and put it on speed limit or just over and fucking hit cruise control and sit in the left yeah. lane, you're a dick. And you're side by side with the guy on the right. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, the worst. Yep. When they just stay the same. <laughs> Or, or even if it's like three lanes and they're all the same. And you're like, there's no opening here. Right. That pisses me Rub off. Rub it as racing. Let me get in there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all right. He finishes up here. But all right. I'm done. <laughs> Looking forward to FACPA in my playlist. Going to share it out when I t- it's in my ears because that's what I do. We appreciate it. I don't it. do it for me. I do it for you. Oh, thank you. So until the next boys. Long live the empire. See you on the radio. And hey, RFB, FACPA plays better in the left lane. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think we're a little herky jerky to listen to because you're like, what? And then, huh? And then, you know. Yeah. That's going, true. Your, your speed is varying quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Everybody else uh, who listens to the show, if you ever do want to send in a voicemail, love the voicemails. It's always fun. We love, love getting it. into those. As much as we love the emails, they're great too, but the voicemails are a lot mm-hmm. of fun. So appreciate RFB always sending those in. In fact, I don't know the last time he sent an email. It's, he sent a lot of voicemails in a row. You know what we should do sometime is we'll send him our emails and he can read them all to us. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put his little spin on it. Only his, only in his voice, or do we have him try to actually mimic? Like, like here's oh, a Mike Labor. I really like the idea. Uh, email. Of you him. try to do a British yeah. accent. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll do like a blooper reel of him at the end of the show where he's getting <laughs> pissed trying to do voices of people. <laughs> oh God, send us your blooper reel RFB. I there's got to yeah. be one. <laughs> All right. I didn't even hear that chair rock once. So that means like he was so focused on his whiskey and that left lane really pissed him off on the way home from work. Maybe he was like leaning back. He was leaning back, so? looking at the ceiling, thinking, pondering these three thoughts. Yeah. So he never yeah. actually leaned forward and rocked. That's, that's right. He didn't get to it yet. He settled down. All right. It's just <laughs> enjoy, enjoy life. Thank you, RFB. He don't give a fuck. No. RFB is like our honey badger. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's very old school, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, laugh it up, fuzzballs. We have spoken. <laughs>